Hi, I'm Glenda Key with Key Functional Assessments Network, and I am just so happy to have you uh, with us. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing with you kind of what my pathway has been since I was a graduate, since I graduated from physical therapy school. I'm a physical therapist by background and am currently the, well, I'm the founder and owner and CEO of Key Functional Assessments. And we're going to spend just a few minutes today sharing with you what the field of industrial therapy is for a physical therapist. And Jane is with me and she's going to be um, doing part of this presentation and we work together in kind of getting people involved in industrial therapy. Jane? Hi, my name is Jane Effner. I am also a physical therapist. Um, I have done many things in my career, including um, 15 years on faculty. So I am familiar with working with students and I'm happy to be sharing this information with you today. Uh, and so I am working uh, with key functional assessments as well as the director of business development. So my role is uh, trying to get as many people uh, engaged with using key functional assessments and um, today we're gonna to just share a lot of information with you, for, with you about industrial rehab. So let's get going. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen here for you. We're gonna go through a slide presentation and we'll be kind of back and forth. Uh, welcome to industrial therapy. Again, as both of us said, we'd like you to take a look. It could be for you. And at least we want this to be just a, a good introduction for you. And we have a little um, screen here that if you want to take a picture of it so that you can capture our contact information, we'd love to chat with you at another time even. If some of you are interested in getting together as a small group or just individually, you can feel free to get a hold of us. And Jane, do you want to introduce our little puzzle? Yes. So just want you to be uh, engaged with us today. And here's a little brain teaser. So you can just take a piece of paper and put nine dots down on your paper, and then you have to uh, connect them using straight lines only. You can only use four lines and you never pick up your pen. So uh, while you're listening, if you wanna work through that brain teaser, um, and then we'll bring that about at the end again. Okay. What I like you to start thinking in terms of is expanding, it's part of this thinking outside your nine dots. This picture in the center of the honeycomb is more our representation. It's our representation of kind of use of our skills as a physical therapist in a clinical setting. And what we're going to try to have you explore or explore with you today is looking outside of that and looking at the employer world and the employees as an avenue for you to pursue instead of just the clinical work. You have a plethora of skills that is right now somewhat limited to after injury or if it's a sports um, approach, then you do see people before they get injured. Well, what we would like you to do is to kind of move that thinking into the work environment uh, through the employer and there, what we have listed here are a number of assessments that help you get there. And we'll be touching base on some of those, but we would like you to work, we would like you to think about working in this field. I've been a part of this field for over 30 years. I totally, totally love it. And um, hope that some of you kind of move in that direction as well. So what we're talking today about today is industrial therapy and the worker care spectrum with which oftentimes covers a worker from the hire to the retire aspect. This breaks into two primary categories, the ability management and the disability management. Our history as therapists is usually after injury in the disability management, but there's so many opportunities for you here, even, even immediately after uh, graduating from PT school. So all the way from the hiring process, we have assessments, Hi, uh, assessing current employees at different parts of that employment process, 
and returning from family medical leave or other events, including then the return to work from a workers' comp injury. So in addition to that, we're going to explore a few of the things and want you to explore further down the road, how to work with the employer and employee environment in health and wellness, using the phenomenal skills that you have for preventing injury or decreasing the level of incidence and in injuries. And, and so this whole picture is what we're going to spend some time on today. To start out, we primarily right now focus on functional capacity assessments and functional capacity assessments of a variety of kinds are what's available for you to actually get into and start working with employers and continue working with employers. And here, you take a different look, for, you kind of move from the clinical joints, musculature, extremities, all that kind of approach. And now we're going to their work-related activities and movements and responses and from a more um, uh, full body approach, including things like how much can they lift and carry, push and pull, how long can they sit and stand. And in our assessment, we're also identifying whether they're faking or are they giving full effort. So that's more the functional approach that in the worker uh, in area that we talk about. Here's a lifting activity in action. And so this is the equipment that I created that has the three patents. And we are now, this process is testing somebody on one of the lifting activities. We also have, um, we also have the mobile, this is a mobile unit as well. So the equipment becomes uh, such that you can put it in a car, in even a small car. And uh, again, so I created the uh, workings for the equipment, the software, the training, and da -da, even wrote a book. So, uh, and it's just, it's just been an exciting avenue for me to be a part of. Some of the things that we focus on a lot in our field in traditional physical therapy, but also in industrial therapy are the outcomes. And the outcomes are a little bit different with industrial therapy because they're the outcomes that an employer um, embraces. And one of those, we, we have a lot of before and afters. And one of those before and afters is lost work days. How many lost work days uh, is, has it changed from when you intervened with your skills to the following year? Other aspects are lowering their workers' comp premiums, lowering the employee turnover, and, de and again, decreasing their lost work days. So we still are focused on outcomes. They are just a little bit different than what we traditionally look at. Here's a before and after one year following our intervention from 74 back injuries to 35 back injuries. So there's a 50, over 50% 50 decrease in injury rates. So the outcomes for employers kind of follows this pattern. So again, decreased injury rates, we want to maintain a healthy workforce and there's all sorts of statistics that will help you um, monitor that. We're going, uh, we're working to decrease their absenteeism and their presenteeism. We're reducing their lost work days or turnover rates. And through all of that, we reduce their workers' comp costs and claims. And a whole lot of that starts with hiring capable employees from the set, from the start through proper testing. And that's also what we do. That's what we as physical therapists can do through functional capacity assessments. If we take another look at this spectrum. So that's just a, a quick kind of introduction of what the employer is looking for and some of the accomplishments you can do even just by one aspect of industrial therapy. But there are so many avenues that you could move into and Jane's going to um, take us from there. There you go. So um, as Glenda mentioned, um, we've got the assessments. So we're, we're working with uh, employers to provide these assessments, but there's lots of other um, services we can provide employers. And sometimes um, when you are trying to really get started in this area, 
um, one way to, to get started is doing some of the educational pieces. And so um, what's important to understand about each employer is you need to know what kind of injuries are happening in their, um, in their plant or uh, in their factory. So once you understand from working with them, you know, where their pain points are, uh, what kind of injuries are happening frequently, then you can work with their employees to help prevent those injuries. And that is through um, a lot of education um, is one approach. So it's either education or it's actual, um, you know, exercise classes. So uh, they can be body part specific or joint specific, for instance, um, back pain big problem. So that's often one that you are focusing on. Uh, carpal tunnel is another one, you know, overuse. And so those are, uh, maybe it's a rotator cuff. So these are, you know, people are doing a overhead type of work, um, you know, carpentry or you know, anything like that, where there's a lot of uh, strain on the shoulder. So you can take these specific body parts and then you can develop educational sessions and actual exercise classes that are going to help prevent injuries. Um, you can also think about this in terms of uh, illness. It's not just injuries, but um, I think it's pretty evident these days. One issue that we have a problem with not only in the workplace, but just in this country is um, obesity. So um, obviously if people are um, uh, carrying extra weight, you know, that is going to set them up for uh, additional injuries. So um, also things like diabetes, uh, heart uh, issues. So all of these factors, we can help as physical therapists in educating and through exercise programs. We can also, um, you know, offer general health and wellness. So, uh, you know, this comes from everything from, you know, educating people. We know now how important sleep is. How are you going to be really effective at work and not make mistakes, especially if you're working in a very, um, high risk situation where your attention has to be, you know, 110%, you know, educating people from everything about, you know, diet, sleep, and then obviously, you know, exercise, but all these come together. So you can offer, um, you know, Pilates, yoga, uh, all kinds of stretching programs. Um, the other thing too is, um, can you go back to the healthy Certainly. order audit for a second? Yeah, the other thing is, um, things like, you know, challenges. We want people to get their steps in. So you can come in and create that program for the employer where people are, you know, challenging each other to get their steps in that walk across America races. Um, so again, trim down, community trim down, working on people um, from an exercise approach for, for controlling their weight. So um, back to the next slide. Okay, and we talked already about functional assessments, uh, functional capacity assessments, and then just one more little piece on the prior to hire. I mean, this is really an interesting uh, area, and this is when somebody is offered a position uh, before you actually hire them, they come in, you know, as a physical therapist, or you can offer the prior to hire assessments to be sure that the person can actually perform the job that you're hiring them for. And so if they can't, then, you know, you, you don't have to hire them. And that is gonna obviously help you with uh, keeping your injuries down because you know that you have the right fit for the job. Next slide. Okay, so some other things you can do as a physical therapist is um, when you are on the work site, you can uh, do walk-arounds, we call them. So you are just walking around, seeing people in their element, seeing people doing their jobs. And what you're gonna notice is that people are compensating. Maybe they have changed their workstation and you're like, well, now why did you put, you know, your computer over there? Or why are you, you know, standing on one foot occasionally? And then they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, because my back hurts or because I just, you know, my work is at a better height if I do this. So you are identifying those issues and you're coaching and you're providing solutions right then and there. And again, think about making the work site ideal. What's going to happen is you're going to prevent those injuries in the long run. Um, ergonomic analysis and advising. This is, you know, a little more formal, obviously, you know, the work around is, I mean, the walk around is, you know, kind of on the fly. This is just taking people's workstations and ensuring that um, everything is at the right height. Is it an ideal, you know, position situation for 
our biomechanics as the worker to ensure that, you know, we're really able to, uh, you know, exert the right kind of force without hurting ourselves. So um, that's a big part of what we can offer. Um, job reviews and analysis. Again, if you want to be sure that a, that, a, that a potential employee is able to do the job, you need to know exactly what the job in, involves. So taking uh, all the, the jobs in a, an employer and saying, okay, you know, person needs to be able to lift this amount of weight to do this portion of the job. They need to have this range of motion to this part of the job and really, you know, breaking it down bit by bit to have an excellent understanding of what uh, each employee needs to be able to do physically to do their job. And then you can go back and do that prior to hire assessment and make sure there's a match. Um, as a consultant, you can also help employers with their claims review uh, from Workman's Comp. You can, um, you know, you're the expert in this area. You can become the expert and you can advise them and assist them. And then also you can get involved in their different um, committees like their safety committee. And you can offer, um, you know, solutions or ad advisement and consulting uh, with their HR and their work and compensation, all of this area that they're struggling with and trying to keep their claims down, you are, can become the expert as a physical therapist and assist with that. And PS, all of these things you can get um, paid for. So you can <laughs> right. get paid for uh, doing these assessments and you can get paid for that consulting. And um, it's a great way to get direct payment. Um, one other thing that's really great about working in industrial rehab is that you have so many uh, avenues in terms of where you can do this work. So, you know, if you have a clinic, um, you can have uh, employees come to your clinic and they can have assessments done in the clinic and then also have um, their rehab done with you. Um, that can be happening in your own clinic, that could be happening in, uh, you know, an outpatient clinic that you're working in. Don't think that just because you're a new grad and you're working either in um, somebody else's outpatient clinic or a hospital, that you can't be the one to say, hey, why don't we get into the business of industrial rehab? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can bring the research and you can show people the benefits, you know, your employer and whether it's outpatient or hospital and, um, you know, be the star of the show. So the other thing too, is that a lot of this work can be done um, at employers' work sites. And that really is very invigorating to get out and be in these different sites and uh, working one-on-one -on -one with workers. And you can actually, as Glenda mentioned, you know, bring this equipment to the work site and uh, think about, you know, the money you're saving, time is money. So employers having to leave the work site, excuse me, employees to go to therapy or have these um, evaluations it's great if you come to them. Uh, so you are able to, you know, some, some people have a practice in, in industrial rehab and they never have a clinic. So a no walls right. option. They so no they're just, right. yeah, a lot of options. So why, 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 are, why, why, why do we wanna get involved in this? The seven Ds of why PTs should partner with employees. So I referenced this a little bit, direct pay revenue. Um, you can get paid directly. And what's that going to help you do? Insurance is, you know, getting more and more difficult to be reimbursed. So you're going to diversify your payer mix. Um, you're going to get a downstream of patient referrals to your practice. Once you're in these employers, um, they're going to say, oh, now my aunt needs therapy. My son needs therapy. Oh, you know what? I want to go to, there's that Glenda. She's at my work and let's go to her practice. So it's great for development of your um, yourself and your and other uh, therapists in your practice. Um, you can deepen your reputation in the community, differentiate your practice. So you you want to become the preferred provider for working with employers, um, and you can drive new business without expanding your footprint um, and your overhead. So you can do this without you know spending a whole lot of money. Um, and who are your customers? Employers we talked about, physicians. Um, vocational rehab counselors, workers' compensation attorneys, and auto accident insurers. So we don't have time to get really into this, but um, there's lots of people that you can be involved with, um, with with this kind of work. And what can you do now? You can join the private practice section, lots of resources there. The orthopedic section has an occupational health special interest group. Um, 
you know, expand your knowledge while you're in school, marketing, entrepreneurship, and financial modeling, and then take a look at the literature in industrial rehab. So you can see this. Here's your answer. Here. Go ahead. <laughs> So the idea is, is, you know, you got to keep thinking out of the box. So, you know, this is not necessarily traditional, uh, right. but another option in, in physical therapy. And the, and the concept is, you know, we, we oftentimes just are locked in with whatever we already know, but it's so important when, when, like when Jane introduced this, it's four lines, but to, to accomplish your goal, you need to think a little differently than what is just put in front of you and that's basically what we'd like you to do and think about industrial therapy as a future for you for you even as a new grad again if you would like to take a picture of our um of our contact information that would be a quick one and then we'd like to say goodbye and and i like to close just by inviting you to if you want to at any time contact either of us and we'd also be willing, very willing and open to spending some time with a small group of you. Maybe it's a group that wants to go into practice or you're thinking about it. Um, and we can talk about all the financial parts and all of that. So thank you so much. Be in touch with us. Okay, bye-bye.